In this video, we're going to talk about the top five and the bottom five. There's definitely more than five in the bottom. <laughs> You've had more than five in the bottom. I do that. Let's you fucking <laughs> teed yourself up for that. <laughs> top five and the worst five supplements that you can buy, that you shouldn't buy, that you won't buy. But you can buy them. You can buy them. Technically, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you could buy, but you won't buy them after watching this video. So let's get going now. So one of the first supplements that you need and that's good for you, because I'm going to go to the good ones, Mike's going to do the bad ones. Don't know why he knows more about the bad ones than I do, surprisingly. Don't know why I've been put on this one. Yeah. Go fish and run out again, shall we? <laughs> first one you need, vitamin D. It's likely, if you live in the UK, you probably don't get enough sunlight, so make sure you take vitamin D3. Quite cheap to get tested at how much you actually need, but for most people, two and a half, three thousand IUs, that's called international units, is the dosage. About that a day is probably going to be okay. First, worst supplement that you definitely would never ever need to take. First one, fat burners. Fat like, burners. Anything that's legal and a fat burner isn't going to work. No. It's just not going to work. You can't pass off fat burners as fat burners if they've got caffeine in. That's not a fat Just burner. get caffeine then. Just get caffeine. Yeah. It's not a fat burner. So the, the marketing is geared towards like vulnerable people who obviously need to lose weight but yeah. don't really know anything about diet or training and it's almost sold as like a miracle supplement. Yep. There's, it, they fall into the same branches. That there's like fat blockers as well and things like that and, and, and carb blockers I've seen as well. So it's like yep. they're preying on vulnerable people's lack of, uh, lack of knowledge. You can't keep your diet the same and add in a supplement and it's going to burn body fat. That doesn't happen. That's impossible. Like it's not gonna happen. So yeah, that's probably, I'd say, up there with one of the worst ones. There's a world obesity problem. If they worked, they'd yeah. be handing them out like sweets on NHS. Yeah, they're not. So if, if they worked, work. we wouldn't be having gastric band surgery, things like yeah. that. You would be having fat burners. Um, and then there wouldn't be any need to, to take illegal fat burners either. Because if the legal ones worked, then why would people, bodybuilders and things like that, take things like clem, cl 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 clembuterol and clem. T3 and whatever other supplement that they take? Um, they wouldn't. So it just stands to reason that just think logically, just think how can taking these tablets affect my fat loss if my diet is still going to stay the same like how, what must it be doing it must either be increasing your bmr which it doesn't do or it must be increasing your needs if it's got caffeine in negligible effects upwards it's minuscule so forget about them don't worry about them <laughs> That? I can hold it, mate. Just, you reckon? Uh, we've got about three minutes, have we? That's three something. minutes. I reckon. That's all I need. We just had pancakes. Twice. Two lots. Yeah, two lots of pancakes. It's pancake day. Not we are dieting. Binge eating. We are dieting, but it's fine. It's not. It's the fine, yeah. Dieting is not the be all and end all for some people. Yeah, this is filmed the day after Amelia Thompson was here, who brought that cheesecake. So again. Intuitively, I wanted pancakes. So yeah, twice. Technically fine. Yeah, so, twice. And I was still hungry after the getting, first lot. So. I was still Amelia, hungry. I was still hungry. I ate it so quick that I was I was still hungry. Yeah. So I thought I'd give it he did actually eat it quick though. Anyway, I did. Yeah, yeah which is a surprise for you, yeah. Anyway, second good supplement, omega three. Omega three supplement that everyone needs. Everyone should probably be taking it. How much? Even if you, even if you eat oily fish, like you're probably not eating that much of it that you got enough omega three. You shouldn't be. If you're eating, if you're eating to calorie maintenance or calorie deficit, you're probably going to be reducing your fats anyway. Yeah. So omega three is a good one. I tend to go for one gram of actual omega-3 fatty acids. So read the label, make sure you're actually getting a gram of omega-3 fatty acid, not just a gram in a tablet. What's the shit one, Mike? Number two, I'm gonna go BCAAs. Because there's other shit ones, waste which I'm time. gonna cover. Waste of but time. BCAAs are probably number two. Waste yeah. of time. Biggest waste of time. Um, unless, unless there's only one small caveat that is if you're vegan. Yeah. They may have been. They if you're may vegan, have a place. vegetarian, it potentially decent to supplement your meals with them. Yeah. So you're gonna get a, a decent range of uh, amino acids. Yeah. Um, which can be quite efficient if vegetarians are vegans. Yep. So we know that whey protein, we know, we know we that, know, we, we know. know that we know. people who use that, we know, like you've conducted the fucking study yourself. We know. We know. We know. Why? Because, mm, link below. No. Um, we know that whey protein is going to be better. So if you're wanting to supplement with something that's not a meal um, to, to hit your protein, go with whey. And if you've eaten protein one to two hours prior to your workout, you don't need them into workout. Um, to stop the muscle atrophy process or whatever pointless. it is, muscle protein breakdown. Pointless. Um, because Still you've pointless. already stimulated MPS. You can only stimulate MPS, muscle protein synthesis, every three to five hours, depending on the individual. It's called a refractory period. It's real fucking heavy, this camera. Get some gains. I know. Next one. 
Should we're we... gonna go. I wasn't finished. I'm finished, mate. My arm's fucking. I wasn't finished. The van coming. Don't don't make me don't make me pull out before I finish. That's just rude. It's not, mate. Okay. I'm bored already. Um, what was I saying? I can't remember now. No. So you don't need it. <laughs> you don't finished. need it. Yeah. That, now I'm done. Three. That's too close. Three. That, smell your breath for me. Number three. Supplement number three. number three. I've not even thought about this. No, we've not, so even planned, it. We've not planned it at all. Caffeine is a good supplement. For anyone who wants to improve performance, improve Fuck alertness yeah. before your gym, it doesn't burn fat. Don't listen to him for that. Um, and contrary to popular belief, one coffee before you train probably isn't enough caffeine um, to what, elicit monster? an ergogenic benefit. A monster's not. No, it's not. What you'd, about need an about, you'd need about four monsters. Don't to drink get four monsters. The same amount of caffeine. If you have a lot of caffeine regularly, then you become somewhat tolerant to caffeine, so therefore you might need even more to have an alert. A feeling from caffeine. Do you need to take periods of time off it? You don't need to take periods of time off Why? caffeine, no, because it doesn't affect your adrenals. Well, that's funny because that's one of my supplements. I Adrenal really fatigue about. is not a real thing, isn't it? Um, obviously, you don't want to over rely on caffeine if you're having loads and loads and loads of caffeine all the time. You probably need to look at things like your sleep, your overall energy intake, training, and all that sort of stuff. Probably need to deal from training, could help as well. But it's definitely not because you're having too much caffeine, you're not, you're not fatigued from that. How much caffeine should you be taking and what time? Should you be taking it whilst you're in the gym? No. Having your pre-workout while you're training? Four to six milligrams per kilo of body weight. So for me, that's about four to six milligrams. Yeah. For Mike, <laughs> that's about 400 to 500. 600. 400, 600. Poor maths. Milligrams. Yeah. But correct. 400 Being 100 kilos is really easy for any of those. Yeah, yeah you love it. You're the yeah. just times it by 100. Sweet. So my supplement, number three, will be adrenal support supplements. Waste of time. The only people that are saying that these are any good are the ones that are selling them. Hmm. Why would they do that, mate? Oh, I, fuck knows. It's beyond me. Leave me alone. Again. <laughs> Again, <laughs> how many links are there? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, what is it? The Department of Endocrinology. Something like that, yeah. Like yeah. the world, the world like yeah. organization. Adrenal fatigue is not recognized. It's not, it doesn't happen. Like it's something that somebody has made up at some point, have said that you can have too much stress on, on your adrenals. Like you can't. And they stop working. And they stop working. That, that doesn't happen. And again, for people who are like selling, they're also selling pre workouts. It's like take this pre workout, take this pre workout, but then you need some time off. Well, make sure you have that yeah. adrenal support. Don't just take time off and don't buy anything from us at all. Yeah. Have this. Have as well. this extra, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you don't need to do that. You don't need adrenal support or anything like that or mm. anything. Mm. So don't listen to them. They're just salesy. It's all fitness is just becoming one big sales pitch. Yeah. Like it's funny. We're not actually selling anything. So what what are we gaining? Now who are you going to listen to? Mm. The unbiased approach, which is when getting no financial gain from this. Just get a lot of shit. A lot of shit, yeah. <laughs> from people or, who are selling it. Or somebody who is making money from it. Like, I don't know. Mm. I who is the trustworthy source? I don't know. Number four on the list is Mike's just beat me on FIFA, so it's now like oh, yeah. 53, 27. It's amazing that you've managed to, like, you've cut that bit in to make me look daft, but then, actually. We all have off days, mate, don't we? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But you don't care about that, do you? You, you care time. about the top five supplements that are worth taking. So number four on the list, creatine. Probably the most studied sports supplement out there and shown to work consistently, time after time. It helps you perform more reps, do more volume in the gym, therefore increase more muscle mass. Creatine in itself, doesn't make you gain muscle mass. It just allows you to do more volume and do more work. And that's how you get stronger and bigger from using creatine. It's not magic, you know, if you just took creatine without training, you would see no effect. Key things to note about creatine. You don't need a loading phase. You don't need one. You can if you want, but you don't need one. Five grams a day taken at any point is good enough. A yep. normal creatine monohydrate is fine. You don't need like cray alkaline or anything like that. Go for the powder more than the tablets because typically the tablets you're going to be taking um, like Hefty like dose. five to ten I think usually I it's usually big. like 50 uh, 500 milligrams to a gram mm. so like yeah they usually need like fucking almost tablets a lot of people say oh I think I I think I'm holding water because of the creatine creatine doesn't hold um, like subcutaneous water it holds water intramuscular so you will look fuller what is like steroids is my supplement now number four yeah. Test boosters. It's not like steroids at all. Utterly useless. Utterly, utterly useless. Yeah. If you want to boost your testosterone, um, inject it. 
Yeah. Um, not that we're condoning that, obviously. But that's the only way that you're realistically going to make any physiological difference in testosterone. If you've got a normal testosterone, the chance of you going super physiological, like an out of range, like a, a steroid user, it's not going to happen. So thinking that test boosters are going to increase your testosterone so much that um, it's going to make any real difference, it's not true. But to have any real difference, then you've got to take it exogenously. And uh, test boosters are, are a waste of time. They're not going to work. So I wouldn't um, take testosterone for uh, testosterone boosters for, for that. And I wouldn't take ZMA or anything like that because sometimes people are like, oh, it increases testosterone. I wouldn't really bother. <laughs>